AR Interface Designs for Vision OS Part 2 Today I want to go over some of the changes I've made to my AR Interface Cube and talk a little bit about why I'm making this. When we think of VR, AR, we think about a world where we can interact in our full range of motion and field of view. For example, I can open a giant browser page and scroll on that huge page right in front of me. I can navigate content all around me in multiple windows in 360 degrees. However, just because you can doesn't mean you should. We actually don't want to use our full range of motion when using devices. When touchscreens became popular, how come touchscreens did not completely replace our laptops? Why do we still use our mouse? The mouse, in a way, is a proxy for motion. It reduces our full range of motion on a screen to a small radius that the mouse or trackpad inhabits. Another example is the Wiimote when the Wii came out. While it was a really interesting idea to have a device that represented one-to-one -one movement from person to screen, it ultimately became impractical for more hardcore games. So the Wiimote was fine for novelty and casual games, but we ultimately want the instantaneous feedback that buttons on a controller provide. Buttons on a controller are the most direct connection to our reaction time. So this is my cube. The cube is a proxy. It's a proxy for navigation in my virtual world. And I want to begin to think about interface design in this way. What ways can I interact with this cube and consequently interact with screens in my field of view? Of course, Apple and Meta are making a bet that Eye tracking is all we're ever going to need. We won't even need a proxy at all. And eye tracking is a more direct way of interacting with our virtual world. And well, I really don't know. We really don't know the future of how we're going to be using these devices quite yet. And I don't think it's a settled question just yet. And I think there's a lot of room for experimentation in this field. So let's get into my cube. Okay, so this is, this is what the app is going to do. We have our cube as a proxy for our interface. And we have created the first way we're gonna interact with something on screen, which is pagination. Pagination is one of the most basic ways we interact with things online. And I've created a paginator with my cube here. So what I'm gonna do is, when I move to the right, I paginate. So let me demonstrate. Rotate to the right, paginate one, two, three, then I can paginate backwards as well. And that's all we're making, so let me go into the code and show you how this is done. So I began this project in the last video. If you want to catch up, uh, take a look at the last video I did, and that'll get you up to speed here. Uh, the last video went over how I altered the entity's rotation using drag gesture. The first thing you're going to want to do is, if you were in Immersive Space Application Session Role, we're going to change that to Window Application Session Role because now we're going to have a window that we're interacting with. And I'm going to add that here. So on our Overview file, um, I have it called Vision Experiments App, or you can name it anything you want. We're going to have a Window Group and a Content View. So that'll be the window. And to have data, we're going to need to create data. And for that, all I have is an observable. And I'm going to call it app data. And the only thing that I have right now is count. So I just want to paginate using a counter. And also, I have a state variable here. State for app data equals app data. And then we're going to pass in app data here into, into both the immersive space here and the window group here. Okay, so that's our overview of the application. I'm going to go into content view and all. So all my content view will be is a V stack. Where I'm going to have text and I'm going to put the app data dot count so we can see the count as we paginate. 
can just put a few style things here. Foreground style. We need to pass in the data here, app data, app data. And then we need something to open the, since our default view will be the window, we need something to open the immersive space. So let's open immersive space. And I will create a task here that opens the immersive space. Also pass an app data here. That's our content view. Okay, here's our immersive view. It looks similar to how I had it before in the last video. I'm taking note that I changed this to double.py instead of 1.57. It's more accurate. So the first thing is let's pass in the variables var app data is app data. So now we can have access to count. I also want to let's put the cube's position a bit higher for 0.5. So my first challenge is I want to make it so that when the cube rotates, as I rotate the cube 90 degrees, I want the count to increment by one. Let me show you what I mean. So as I rotate this, when it goes there, I want the count to increase. I want the count to increase again, the count to increase, and then if I do this, I want it to decrease. So let's think about this. It means every time I click and then I let go, I'm going to be um, assessing the state of things. Nothing's gonna be happening while I'm pressed down. It's only gonna happen when I let go of the press. That would be determined by an on ended. We need to add an on ended and then whatever assessment needs to be done within this on ended but what happens if i just press down and i don't do anything i don't want any calculation to be done then so i'm going to put this inside a if block if value dot translation 3d dot x not equal zero that'll help us make sure that we're actually getting some x translation when we click and drag I'm going to put value in here. The problem is the value.translation3d.x, it resets every time I click and let go. So it'll start back at zero. So look, I'm getting the translation x and I'm starting from zero and it's showing me my translation at every time I click to the right. 66. 68, 59, but what I want is all these numbers to add together so that as I as I move this cube, it's going to track the entire X translation and it'll divide that by 90 degrees until it gets the page I'm on. So I need a total translation variable. So let's add that. Add state var total translation and it needs to be a double and then I need to add my x value every time that it moves okay down here what do we see We see the number get big and we have our total X translation. So every time I move this, I am tracking how much I've moved to the left or right in total. So that's good. That's exactly what we want. So the next thing is I have to get this total translation, divide that by the equivalent of how many times the cube rotated 90 degrees and that will give me my count variable. So let's do that here. Another thing I neglected to talk about was that I changed this. So let's think about this. We want to rotate pi divided by two, which is 90 degrees. 
So when this on this left side equals 1, then this will rotate 90 degrees. So this 54 number is an entirely arbitrary number based on feel. Alright, I want you to understand something here. Every time that I click and drag to the right, I am tracking the total units. So this, watch my mouse. If I move all the way over here, that would be 198, as you can see here. If I move just over here, that is 81. And all we want is an arbitrary number that feels good, that when we move that amount, we want that to be 90 degrees. And so that would be a fraction here. So let's say I made this 154, right? Well, then it would just take longer to move 90 degrees. I would have to move 154 units. So as you can see, I've moved almost a little more than that, a little less than that here, but it would just be slower. The rotation would be slower. So I just chose 54 because that felt like a good number to me. So that's basically my constant that I'll have to apply everywhere. So I would let new count equal uh, since we're in double and our count is an integer of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we would have to uh, transform this number into int. And I'll take total translation and I divide it by 54. So that will tell me how many times I've moved 90 degrees. So does that make sense? Uh, the total count of x divided by 54 will give me the total amount of times that I've moved 90 degrees. That's simple enough, right? And we will set app data dot count equals new count. And let's see if that works to change our count. And it works. So you can imagine having a screen here, a slideshow, and you would just move this cube and you can move back and forth through your slideshow. The problem is we're skipping numbers, we're not getting an accurate uh, count. So what we actually want is a snap. It, you, you know how in audio or other things where you're using a spectrum, you want to snap to a number, snap to a grid. Um, this is a similar concept. We just want it to snap to the closest number that we're at. If we, Say we move to like 20.9. Well, we want to actually snap to 21 because we don't want we don't want to be too much in between numbers here. Let's add that snap functionality here. So on ended, we're going to just copy this here. And all we want to do is whatever count we're at, we will snap to that number. So on ended, we'll always move the cube 90 degrees. I have to cast this into a double. So one. So if I move a little past, I'll snap back to three. So you move a little bit and it'll snap to that grid. What happens if I want some tolerance built in? Like, I'm trying to paginate back here and it's not quite moving enough. Uh, it's kind of missing my pagination sometimes. Well, you just can build some tolerance in here. And again, it's about feel. It's about, it's about uh, estimating how much tolerance you want, but you can add some tolerance here. So I added, let's say 0 0.04, and that should create some weight and tolerance to my translation. So as you move the cube, you paginate the way you want it to. So there you have it. That is my cube. And I've got a lot more plans with this cube about how to create more interface design with this cube but I hope you can understand the way I'm thinking about this and start to maybe think about interfaces in this way yourself for 3D environments. And, that, and that's all I've got for today. I'm gonna keep going with this project. Be sure to like and subscribe and see my art, my art and music content. 
and other Apple Vision Pro content. Thanks for watching.